physical strength. They need healing in their body, Lord. We just ask right now you just touch them in a mighty way and heal their bones, heal their organs, heal their blood cells, whatever they need healing of, Lord. Lord, just give them a peace of mind that everything's going to be all right. Lord, as we go on with this service, we just ask that you have your right away and lead us and guide us in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Singers and choir. We also have the plate out for tithes and offerings, and at the end of service, we'll put it out for the Passover offering. Well, Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will read their doom. Trumpets will trumpet out. Trumpets will surely sound. All of the dead, All the dead shall rise. Rising us from the sky. No one will no one dies. Heaven were loud. Troublesome times are here. Filling men's hearts with fear. 
sinful wretch My soul was a mess until I met him at the altar on my knees Oh, but then I felt his touch My soul was lifted up And under the blood I found relief Well, I can sing a new song Under the blood I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb I can sing a new song Under the blood I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb What great fellowship to man Walking daily hand in hand With my Savior
walks among us all that he does all of his mercy all of his love now if a pen of a writer could write every day even this whole world could never contain how I have been blessed there is warmth in the
What a happy time, so I'm glad tomorrow when we lay our heavy burdens down in this lonesome valley. No more to roam, having labored on through joy and sorrow, hoping to receive my golden crown.
TikTok thing. You know, I'm not a TikTok person, so I clicked on it. I'm like, it's busy, busy. It's from, a, it's from a Christian man, so I felt pretty good clicking on it. So, okay, I'm going to watch this. Sitting there drinking coffee. I'm going to watch this video. And it was this preacher man sitting on a, on a, on a chair. And he's he saying, there's this group of people that went to this art museum. <laughs> right? This is, this is great. Right? He said, there's this group of people that went to this art museum. They were having a tour through an art museum. I, I just, this is killing me. I, I can't help myself. And they were looking at this painting, going from one painting to the next, and they, were, and they stopped at this one, and it was a picture, right? It was a painting. It had a, it had a devil, it had a man dressed like the devil on this side of the table, and, a, and, a, and, a, and just an old English man sitting here, and an angel sitting in between. They're looking at the chessboard on the table, right? Keeps going up. There we go. Woo! I'm too loud. You don't need me that loud. But you see, the devil has people thinking they got to live amongst the dead because I've got nowhere else to go. But you see, there's something that you need to realize. Just because you're in that situation right now does not mean something else ain't coming on the scene. But a word needs to be fulfilled. Oh, it got quiet. But listen, y'all know where I'm going. Go to Luke. I'm going to start on verse uh, 26. You'll see the first three words are, and they arrived. But that not only was the answer for somebody, that was the fulfilling of a word. Because go back further... Jesus jumped in a boat with the disciples and said, let us go to the other side. Help is on the way, but a word has to be fulfilled first. You see, when Jesus said, let us go to the other side, I love the way that Pastor Joe puts it. Jesus had to be real careful what he said. Because when he said it, it was coming. 
when my God says something, you don't, I don't care if he has to move heaven and earth if he says that it's happening. When he said, let us go to the other side, I, the boat might not have made it, but you would have set foot on the other side. But you see, what, what the disciples didn't know, Joe likes props. I'll grab me a prop. I didn't plan it, but this is my prop tonight. What you don't know is sometimes when God gives you a word, you still may need to pail some water. Because you see, when God gave them a word, said, let us go to the other side. And they was traveling with the king. They was going the way he said, and they was traveling with him. How in the world can the devil come against you? That's exactly when he will. When you go where he told you, and you're going with him, that's when the storm's going to come. Some people say, well, the devil leaves me alone. Well, you probably don't have enough God in you for a used demon to chase you. <laughs> Stole that from my Uncle Kenneth. <laughs> but you see, the disciples got scared. What they should have done is they should have known, you see, because Jesus was so, I guess, resting in his own word, he went and took a nap. I said, we're going to the other side. <laughs> Ain't nothing in this world going to stop me from getting there. Because I said, let's go to the other side. But the disciples dropped their pails because they saw a storm and they saw water coming in the boat and they got scared and said, go wake him up. Go get him. Go wake him up. What they should have done is grab that pail started pailing that water out. <laughs> you may have to do a little bit of work to get where God told you you're going. You may have to fight against the storm to get where God told you you was going to go. But you see, what I don't understand is that most of, the, some, most of these men were fishermen. They knew how to handle a boat, but they didn't know to start bailing the water out. <laughs> you see, there's times God will leave you to do what He knows you can do. Oh, goodness. Did I step in it? Did I step in it? God's going to leave you to do what He knows you're trained to do. If Peter was a professional fisherman, he knew how to handle a boat in a storm. I think he could have instructed them, boys, get that water out. Start pailing. What do we need to start pailing out of our boat? What do we need to start paling out of our boat? Start getting it out. <laughs> because guess what? I'm going where God told me to go. But they got scared. Master, do you not care that, we're per that we perish? Don't you care we're going to die? He steps out. And he stops the storm. Where's your faith? I said, let's go to the other side. Why didn't you have faith in my word instead of faith in that storm? When was the last time you had faith in God's word, not faith in the storm? Not faith in what is coming against you? Well, you don't know what's coming against me. You know what? If I told you some of the things that the Lord has provided for me, you would not believe it. Because it's amazing at how at the ninth hour, when my God comes through, but I still got to do what I can do and leave the rest to Him. I can grab a pail and start pailing water out. I can start pailing water out of my boat. You know why? Because I know my boat will stay seaworthy if I keep working on it because I got the master in the boat. If I got the master in the boat, it'll stay seaworthy. But I still got to do what I know to do. But guess what? He calmed the storm. And they sailed on. And they arrived. 
the word was fulfilled. Let us go to the other side. And they arrived. You know what's amazing? My God is such an amazing God that He can fulfill a word and change a scene. When He fulfills a word, He changes the scene and He answers a prayer because there was somebody else. See, they didn't know what was on the other side. But you see, there was one on the other side that Jesus had penciled in for that, for that appointment. I know there's coming a day, there's one over there that there's another battle that I'm just going to step into and I'm going to show everybody I'm God, but I got to get to the other side. <laughs> and when he spoke the word, let's go to the other side. And the disciples failed the test. It hurts when you fail one of God's tests. You know what I love though? He doesn't give up on you when you fail. He didn't kick them out of the boat. He didn't tell them to leave. He didn't tell them, you don't get to go on. He asked them where their faith was. He taught them a lesson. I love that I got a God that even though I'll fail a test, He'll teach me the lesson and let me continue on the journey. Sometimes, Kenny, he delivers me when I didn't deserve it because I wasn't doing exactly what I should have been. But he loves me enough to still say, you know what, son? I need you to step up a little bit, but let's go on. <laughs> let's keep going because <laughs> I got a plan and I can't let you spoil it. <laughs> so let's go on. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> if you think you're important enough to spoil God's plan, I think you need to readjust what you're thinking because guess what? <laughs> there ain't no Nobody in this world that can spoil God's plan. Because guess what? Simon Peter wasn't where he should have been when he denied Christ. All of a sudden, another Simon come walking down the road. That's a whole other message, but I want somebody to understand this. I feel like I need to throw this in. All of a sudden, another Simon come walking down the road that had to help Jesus carry his cross. Don't think you're so important that there ain't another one walking down the road. And they arrived. He fulfilled a word and changed the scene. He fulfilled a word and stepped into another battlefield. What? It's not hunky-dory when he answers prayer. Not always. Sometimes he fulfills a word to step into the next battlefield. Sometimes he'll fulfill a word to step in again. You thought it was great when he calmed a storm. Look at what he, what he stepped into when he stepped out of the boat. Look at what come at him. But look what he was ready for. Oh, I'm getting excited. I'm still in my opening. Y'all pray. <laughs> he stepped in and answered and fulfilled his word and answered a prayer nobody else knew was being prayed. Because there was a man <laughs> that everybody thought was that crazy wild man. I'm going to read it out of Luke, so I'm going to, I'm going to fill in some blanks. It was in another gospel that they explained this. This man that was vexed with devils was so wild, was naked, and when they would try to chain him up, just break him. He'd just pluck him off like they is nothing, Kenny. They could physically they couldn't chain him. He was crazy, he'd cut himself with rocks and cry out. So they just let him live in a cemetery. Go live amongst the dead. We can't control him, so we just let him live in the cemetery. I almost named this message this, get out of the cemetery. Because us as Christians, we're real bad to want to go live amongst the dead. 
we're real bad to think we got it, we're going to go live amongst the dead because that devil will have us so tore up. You know, I'm, I've been a Christian for a while. I grew up in church. I've seen some amazing things. I've seen some great revivals. I've heard some really good preaching throughout my years. Even I will get caught up in, I wish it was like when I was little. A lot of people went to nodding their head. I wish it could be like, I wish we could have revivals like when I was little. Where it'd just break out and they'd go two months. My Uncle Kenneth could barely preach it Sunday mornings at his church because he was in revival all summer. He had to have other men ready to step in because he'd be in revivals and he didn't know when they was ending. I wish it could be that way. I wish it could be that way. What are you doing? Quit trying to live amongst the dead saints and start living and doing what God has called you to do. Behold, I'm God and I change not. Why ain't we having revival like that? Because we're remembering the way it used to be instead of trying to bring it in. I may not preach like some of them old preachers. I know I don't. I wish I could hold a candle to them. But I got two ears and one mouth so I can listen twice as much and I'll give what he gives me. I can give everything he gives me. I can pour it all out and I can let it all go. And if I think we can all do that, I think we'll start seeing it break loose and we won't have to start trying to live amongst what's already passed and we can live in what God has called us to. And they arrived. I love when Jesus steps on the scene. We'll read. Verse 26. And they arrived at the country of Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man, which had devils a long time and wear no clothes, neither abode in any house but in the tombs. And he saw Jesus and cried out, and fell down before him with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God, the Most High? I beseech thee, torment me not. For he had commanded the unclean spirits to come out of the man. For oftentimes it had, it had caught him, and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters, and he brake the bands and was driven of the devils into the wilderness. And Jesus asked him, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. Anybody know what legion means? How many that is? 6,000. 6,000 6, demons. He fulfilled a word to step into a battlefield to fight six thousand demons I think I'd take the storm <laughs> oh oh he fulfilled a word to step into a battlefield with six thousand demons but you know what Kenny said they couldn't bind him physically Oh, but spiritually, that man had been bound for years. Imagine that. For years. It said for a long time. For years. That man's soul had been bound up. Tormented. 6,000 demons living in that man. Tormenting that soul. That man couldn't go nowhere. You know who was in control was them demons. But when my God, when my Jesus had said, when he stepped ashore, do you know 6,000 demons couldn't hold him, Kenny? Because he had to come and give reverence to the one most high. 
6,000 demons straight out of hell couldn't hold one man from getting to my God. Why do we want to worry about what's coming against us when all of hell couldn't keep you from him? All of hell couldn't hold that one man from going and falling at his feet. You know why? Because they knew they had to. I think, Kenny, if they could have, they'd have stopped him from calling him Jesus, Son of the God Most High. But they couldn't control his tongue. They couldn't control his legs anymore. You see, before they could control his legs and they could drive him off into the wilderness, they could go make him live in the tombs. But when Jesus stepped on the scene, hell got broke loose from that man. <laughs> All he had to do was fulfill the word and step on shore. All my God has to do to change a situation is step into it. 6,000 demons couldn't hold one man from falling at my God's feet. We want to act like this world wants to throw everything at us. Why don't you start realizing the power your God has? All the hell can't stop you. All the hell can't keep you. You see, they thought, Kenny, they had him bound. Oh, that soul's bound up. I, I can see now when Jesus stepped on scene, he started feeling loose. And I could see them demons holding them chains with everything they had. I, got, I can't let him get to him. Everything, all 6,000 of them just holding everything they got shaking. Why can't we stop him? Oh, Jesus, Son of the Most High. All he had to do, he probably couldn't utter one thing. He probably hadn't actually had control of his tongue in years. Probably never been able to utter a word until finally when he caught sight, he got to say one thing, and it was, Jesus, Son of the God Most High. Oh, <laughs> that tongue got loose. <laughs> then his legs got loose. <laughs> his arms got loose. <laughs> and he could go. <laughs> and he got to fall at his feet. <laughs> Why don't you quit living in the tombs? Quit letting the devil try to tell you, you got no move. I got you bound up. You ain't getting there. You ain't getting heard. I've got control of it all. I've got you in your little bubble and you'll never get out. You see, I feel like there's a lot of Christians that just feel like I'm stuck in my little bubble. There's no other Christian that knows my feeling. There's no other fellowship around me. I try to go to church, but I don't feel it. I feel like nothing can, I can't reach out of my bubble. I feel, they try, they think the devil's got them locked in. But why don't you start shaking loose and start getting a praise ready? Why don't you start trying to say Jesus, throw Jesus at that bubble? I bet you anything that bubble ain't going to hold. <laughs> oh, somebody needs to hear this because somebody's getting broke loose. <laughs> you say, well, you just said a word has to be fulfilled. I got you a whole book which word you want fulfilled. Because guess what? This was before he went to the cross. Now he's done went to the cross. He's done resurrected. His stripes are there. The blood's been shed. And I can call on him. Guess what? The word's already fulfilled, Kenny. I know the word's fulfilled, so now let's get some prayers answered. Somebody needs to get loose. Somebody's going to feel this tonight because I'm tired of God's people feeling like they're on an island to themselves because guess what? They arrived. <laughs> when my God arrived, <laughs> when my Jesus arrived, <laughs> situation changed. You know what? After he died on that cross and he arrived in hell, that situation changed because he walked in. 
went, these are mine. Keys to death, hell, and the grave. He walked right in hell. And I can see him walking out just like this. Saying, guess what? I got him back. <laughs> I like the way Joe put it. He wasn't the second Adam. He was the last Adam. Because we won't need to try to go get him back again. <laughs> I don't have to worry about these keys getting lost again. These ain't getting lost. Because my God done went to the cross. He done put his blood on the mercy seat. And he done stepped back out of the grave. I serve a living God that stepped out of that tomb on the third day. Holding the keys to death, hell, and the grave. And he said, come on boys, I got you. I've got them all right here. All you got to do is step into them. Now you want to tell me right now that all of hell is going to try to come against you. That's fine, because guess what? My God's got the keys. All of hell can come at you, because guess what? My God's got the keys, so I'm driving the car. You can try to leave me all you want. You ain't going nowhere without keys. I know it's a door. Oh, thought you was looking. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot he can't see out of his left ear. That's his joke. I can't forget. See, because there's plenty of times. Oh, that, that devil just wants to slip in. You know you ain't going to get it done. All these grand plans. How are you going to do it? Look at the world. They're mine. And every day, the world becomes more and more mine. I feel like there's pastors that's hearing this in their ear right now. I'm coming for you and your church. I will have laws passed that will make it illegal for you to preach that word. You're going to have to choose between your God and serving jail time. I'll take everything from you. I'll take your church. I'll take every bit of finances you have. I'll have it all. See, the devil will paint you a pretty grim picture. He sure can't, can he? <laughs> you know what? It's amazing. That devil will paint the worst picture ever. But then something will happen. Sneak right up on you. I'll start feeling that anointing. <laughs> I'll start feeling that anointing kick in, Come Kenny. On. All of a sudden, that, devil, that devil's voice just gets quieter and quieter. But you know what? I get happier. I start feeling something. My feet won't sit still. I start feeling like my feet are on fire. But my hands will be cold. Amen. But I'll be sweating. I don't know what's happening to me, but I know this. I don't hear his voice no more, and my outlook looks a whole lot better. He'll paint that old bleak picture, but all of a sudden my God will arrive on the scene, and it all changed. I'll start seeing, no, oh, devil, I'm going to see a revival. I'm going to see this church so full. We'll have to stand them outside. I'm going to see this church so full. It's a good thing we got so many preachers because we're going to have to have one preacher in the fellowship hall. We're going to have to have one preacher down at the pavilion. We're going to have to have a preacher here at the church. And we're just going to have to let them go. And we're just going to have to have three or four services because that's how full this is going to get. If you really, if you, when my God steps on the scene, all of a sudden I start seeing revival coming. Oh. but I got a pail of water. Yep, I took it full circle.
because guess what? Here's what the only thing 6,000 devils could do was say, Lord, don't send us into the deep. <laughs> they knew they couldn't stay. They didn't say, you don't have the power to send us out of here. You know, they didn't sound, 6,000 did not sound all that bad when they started talking to Jesus because the only thing they could do was say, you see that herd of pigs over there? Permit us, permit us to go into that herd of pigs. Please don't send us into the deep. So he permitted it. 6,000 demons had to ask my God's permission. Yeah. Yeah. All the hell and still had to ask his permission. Don't you let that devil try to talk to you and tell you he's got the last move. Whoa. You just get up and get out of that graveyard. Quit living in that. Quit living in that graveyard. Because that devil will have you painted up, tore up, and you'll think, there ain't nothing around me but death. It's going nowhere, dead ends. There ain't nothing coming my way. But guess what? There's a God that's on the other side of the river that's had you penciled in that just said, let us go to the other side. He's coming. But you got to get out of the graveyard. You got to get out of the graveyard. You know what else I love? Sometimes them pigs have more sense than us. Because them demons went into them pigs. Them pigs ran off and drowned themselves. They weren't living with them. We'll sit there and live with the devil forever, Kenny. Those pigs knew better. They just went and drowned themselves. They said, I ain't living with that. I wish, that, you know what, maybe some of us need to go for a second dip or something. I don't know, but we need to quit trying to live with all that because sometimes the pigs may have more sense than us. I said us. You can't say I'm pointing fingers. I said us. Them pigs were smart enough. I ain't living with the devil. I ain't living with it. You know what? When was the last time that when that devil started coming at you, you said, I ain't living with that. And you went to drown it. You see, but I don't have to go, Kenny. Because I know I said some of us may need to go for a second dip. Let me explain this. I'm not talking about going for a second baptism. I'm talking about going for another dip in that living water. Why don't I go and open up my Bible, start letting that living water flow over me? All of a sudden, that devil, you know what? That'll drown that devil right out. It'll drown him right out because I ain't living with him. When was the last time you decided when that devil stepped in, where's my Bible? Because I ain't living with you. You ain't stepping in this no more. Hmm. And I'm not talking bad about water baptism. I, don't, don't you misread me. But I'm talking about spiritually. We might need another baptism. <laughs> Sometimes I might need to go and dip back into the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and you know why? Because guess what? Devil don't know what I'm saying. He may be able to come against me when he knows my language, but when I can tap in and I can start talking in that heavenly language, every devil in hell can sit there and listen to what I'm saying. Only ones who know is me and God. And his word is getting out. <sighs> if pigs had enough sense to drown them, maybe we should start drowning them. Spiritually, go get in your Bible. Go get in your prayer closet. And when I say get in your Bible and get in your prayer closet, I don't mean for a minute or two minutes or three minutes. I mean you get in there till you lost track of time. <laughs> I want to get in there, Kenny. 
till the Holy Ghost took such control. I don't know how long I've been in there. But when I step out, I step out refreshed like I'm stepping out of that nice fresh stream. Because he's, he's got a well of living water that never runs out. He's got a well of living water that can renew me daily. It says to renew my mind daily. Renew me daily. If I can go and I can get a hold of that living water, I can get something in me. I can get in with that Holy Ghost. I can start drowning out everything that devil wants to give me. And I can start <laughs> pailing that water he tried to put in my boat out. Because <sighs> guess what? A bucket of water is heavy. And if I sit there and I'm constantly, I'll get tired. But if I can get refreshed and I can get me a drink of water, I can keep paling. Sometimes it may feel like he gave me just enough strength to get through today. That's all right, because he'll be back tomorrow. Trust me, I have been there where it felt like I've barely got enough to get through today. And I'll get to my bed, and it feels like I'm just, Lord, I barely could fight today. But all of a sudden, Kenny, I'll wake up tomorrow morning. And I may again only have enough strength for that day, but I was still refreshed from what it was when I went to bed. <laughs> it may be a day at a time, but you know what? He'll, stick it, he'll still get you through day by day. You know what's amazing to me? Like I said, there's been times I felt like I barely had enough. But you know what? I always had enough. What? I always had enough. You'll never ever, and I think I could poll every Christian here that's been a Christian for a while. Never have I ever been in a situation. I thought I didn't have enough. But when I dug down, like that woman with that mill, with that flour, when she dipped down in that barrel, that barrel of meal, Every day, every day, it was just enough for one cake that day. Just enough every day for that one cake. He didn't overflow the barrel. But every day, Kenny, when she dipped into that barrel, she pulled up enough meal for a cake that day. It was just enough for that day. You say, what are you saying, preacher? Sometimes I'm in a situation like Paul where, Lord, I've prayed three times for you to remove this thorn from my flesh. I've prayed three times and the answer came. My grace is sufficient. It was sufficient, but you know what? It was just enough. But it was never not enough. Never has my God When God stepped on the scene, when all of a sudden, when God stepped on the scene, <laughs> her plan was, I'm going to make one cake and die. When God stepped on the scene, I'm going to make one cake a day until this drought ends. Oh, oh, that's, that's a dirty word sometimes now, Kenny, but say that again. The obedience is what fed her all the days of her life. Oh, goodness. You mean there's times I got to pail water, I got to work, and there's times I got to be obedient? Oh, and I got to be 
obedient with blind faith. Sometimes you have to preach stuff you don't want to. That too. <laughs> it ain't no fun. Oh goodness. Oh, Kenny step. Yep. Amen. <laughs> Mm -hmm. The king landed and had one more move for him. Amen. You know what? That tied it together perfectly. Everybody staying. That was it. I love. That in the ninth hour, when I see no way, when I see nothing, he can always step on scene. See, I said the disciples failed the test, which they did, but he still was willing to step on the scene. And he changed the storm. Like I said, I feel like tonight somebody needs to break whatever the devil's trying to tie you up in. I feel like somebody needs to break whatever this world is trying to tell you they got you. As they're coming to play, I'm getting ready to call prayer time. But here's honestly how I feel. Because you know what? It said, and they arrived. The they main point was Jesus. Jesus arrived. But he arrived with his disciples. Now in that aspect, they was there to watch and learn and be trained. But tonight, here's honestly how I feel. Whatever it is, we'll act as the disciples. Somebody might need hands laid on them tonight. Somebody might need something. But don't you walk out of here still in that way. Don't you walk out of here still bound up trying to live amongst the dead because God called you to live call, come to give you life and life more abundantly he didn't call us to stay among the dead so tonight as I call prayer time I honestly feel if you need it come up here brothers and I and sissy or whoever we'll lay hands on you and we're walking out of here renewed because Jesus fulfilled a word and he stepped on saying it's prayer time
That's good. I said, I've been on the couch, but it's a temporary stay. God only allowed it for just a few days. But look out, devil. I'm about to rise. Find yourself a hole and try to hide. Because when I get up, your head will be smashed with the soles of my feet. I'll warm you in advance. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. That's right. You told him just how you felt, didn't you? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Good good message, Zach, tonight. When they when they arrived. Yes. Yes. Church tonight. We hey, we're two or three are gathered, he's in the midst, so we've got more than a number. So he's right here. So it's good. 
good. Uh, I, I, I like when Jesus showed up on the on the area of uh, the Gadarenes there. That uh, uh, if you notice, he wasn't by himself. He had his disciples with him. But it's but the the Bible says when he when the the uh, demoniac there, when the man full of devil saw Jesus. They cried out. Guess what? The devils knew exactly who he was. <laughs> and even called him by name and said, who, who's he the son of, the most high? And he knew, they knew he had power to do what they knew their final destination would be, which was the pit, which was the, 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 the abyss. And, uh, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. They knew. They knew exactly who he was. And uh, well, and the and the blessed part about it, and I know the Bible doesn't go into the details of what happened after the man, but when we were in Israel, uh, one of the uh, guides over there was talking about the the city. There's a place over there in the hills called Decapolis, which it means ten. It's the the area of ten cities, and there's ten small cities over there. And history has it over there that that area was evangelized by that man that was the devil's was run out of. And because if you notice what Jesus told him, he said, go tell what God has done for you. Tell you, basically, go give him your testimony. How you was over here and you had the demons cast out of you and how Jesus and how, how he, he, told, he told him to get out and, and he ran him out. And then he saved him, and he said, now I'm in my right mind, and he was able to go out and he was able to evangelize. And that, those cities are known today from history that the demoniac over there, after he was saved, after Jesus cast him out, he went over there and won souls in, in, that, in that area. And that's, that's, I guess, the establishment of that city. So I thought that was really neat when he, when he talked about that because I read that in the Bible so many times. And it's almost like, well, here, let me tell you what, or let, let us tell you what, by history, uh, what happened after that. And I thought that was really neat how that happened. So, but uh, yes, a good word. We, and this morning, Brother Kenny, good job this morning. We've had church all day. We really have. The Lord's blessed us. He, he has. And we appreciate everybody being out and being a part of the service tonight. Here is the plate. We're going to put it up uh, after the services for the next couple of weeks. We'll do a regular tithes and offerings, but at the end, but tour, at the end of service, we'll have one up here, and uh, that way you can give to we, this. We uh, receive three special offerings a year: Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles, to bless Israel, bless of Israel. And we do this is because uh, of what the Lord told Abraham. He said, "I'll bless those that bless you." And we definitely, there's no doubt, if you can look around, everybody that's been part of this body of Christ for a long time, this church, you know how blessed we are here. We are truly blessed as a body. And there's no doubt we've got at least seven plus maybe outreach ministries that we give to, to different places. Yeah, there's just there's so many. But I believe, truly believe, one reason why we are so blessed is that we bless Israel through Christians United for Israel. That organization and their executive director, like I said, is John Hagee, Pastor John Hagee from San Antonio, Texas. So if you want to give to Israel and we, we, we give 100% at the end of the collection or at the end of the, after we receive it and we collect it, uh, we just write one check to Kufi, Christians United for Israel, and they put it to uh, whatever needs and uses there is there in Israel, whether it's feeding, whether it's closing, whether it's housing, whatever it is, we trust them to get the money where, where it's needed. And uh, like I said, we'll do that for a couple of weeks and give everybody an opportunity to do that. And if you're watching online tonight and, and you... Uh, uh, want to give, you can do that. We've got an app called Givelify on your phone. Uh, anybody that wants to uh, put that app on their phone, uh, it's just a few quick steps. If you need help doing that, send us a message through Messenger at, from the House of Prayer. We'll help you download, walk you through the steps of downloading and, and knowing how to give through Givelify. You can do tithes offerings and special offerings with, with Givelify. A lot of people are using it, aren't they? still using it so it's we we established it back when the pandemic and all this and we wasn't able to uh, kind of congr meet as a congregation but we've kept it there and, and it's uh, it's been a blessing because people give through that so 
Thank you so much for, for watching tonight. Anytime you get a chance, uh, you tune in and watch, but we'd like to have you come be a part of the congregation sometime. I know that, there, that there's circumstances and things come up, and the next best thing from not being here is being able to watch it through live stream. But we'd like you to, to see you here. Appreciate everybody coming out tonight and being a part of the service. Like I said, we've had church. We've been blessed. Uh, not this weekend coming, but the next weekend, the following weekend, 6th, 7th, and 8th, Dr. Randy Caldwell and his brother Dean Caldwell and Dean's wife Peggy will be here. I'm not sure, but I believe Renee may be coming. And Renee may be coming with Randy, which is Randy's wife, and and, and maybe his daughter, uh, uh, Kayla, will be here. So. <laughs> yeah, that's what he says all the time. Yeah, but they'll be here for that weekend Friday night. 7 o'clock, Saturday night, 6 o'clock, and then Sunday morning a service with uh, probably both Randy and Dean. I don't know how they'll, how they'll do that, but they truly are a blessing. And then so that, that Sunday night, the, the weekend, of the six, which is Mother's Day weekend, we won't have service that Sunday night. So there'll be no service. We uh, like to spend time. If we've still got our mamas here, we, we spend, try to spend time with them and let families do that. So have I covered everything? Okay, I'm used to looking at Robin. She's on her way back, by the way. She had she went and visited her brother, uh, David, and uh, she's on, she's probably back by now. But uh, uh, her mom Judy is going to go spend a couple of weeks down there, and just be there and be, be a help. And so just keep uh, David in your prayers. Uh, he's uh, he's been battling, but uh, we're believing the Lord just uh, going to take him through with whatever, uh, however he sees fit. You know, uh, the Lord uses people. Yes, he did. He, he, he got saved, and he's trusting the Lord, and just like we are. But to have, have the Lord use it, wants to use, if he uses the, the and folks, he uses doctors. He uses uh, medicine. If, uh, if uh, the Lord didn't give them the knowledge to do it, they couldn't do it. So it's, uh, anytime, if you take as much, say, I've, you know, you've got a headache, and you take an aspirin, you know what? You can still thank the Lord for that because the Lord gave somebody the knowledge to create that to help in what, whatever situation. It doesn't matter what it is. Whatever a situation is, the Lord gave somebody knowledge to help us if, if there's something out there. So, And just like uh, ministering to witnessing to whatever, the Lord is uh, providing it through His people. He, he gets it done. Amen? All right. Yes. And the cooks and stuff. They wanted to know different things we had when they didn't have church. So right. I, Good. I called and told them about it. Good. Amen. Uh, they're going to induce her labor in a couple weeks. So okay. they will be here in a couple weeks. And so just remember them. She's a little bit small, Haley and yeah. baby, but just remember them. As far as I know, everything's okay. And, you know, yes. And, uh, and just remember my kids. Wanted to act like they was brought to church every service when they were brought up. And they were. <laughs> wanted to act like it instead yeah. of, you know. I just want the ones that claim to be saved to be on fire for God yes. and uh -huh. the ones that aren't to surrender to the Lord fire, and yeah. be who He wants them to be. Amen, sis. Amen, sweetheart. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, let's all stand. Let's, we want to thank the Lord for this service. And I want to speak a blessing over before we leave. Gracious Heavenly Father, once again we come before you this side of eternity to thank you and praise you. Lord, thank you for such a blessed day, for being with us, for meeting with us. Lord, we just thank you for the words that's been spoken in song. We thank you for the words that's been preached. Lord, just let it resonate through us and let it minister to us that we can be what you've called us to be. The, the, the Great Commission is to go out and make disciples of others. So let others see you in us. Let, us, let our lights so shine that... that people will know that we serve a true and living God. Father, we thank you for what you've done for us this day and throughout this week. And Lord, we've got faith and trust to know that you're going to take us through the next week and the next, ever so how long you should tarry before you call us to be with you. And Father, we just thank you, Lord, that we know you're there and you hear us when we pray. Watch over us, protect us, Lord. Lead us and guide us in all that we do. We want to bring you the praise, honor, and glory that you so deserve. May the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you, may his face shine upon you, may he be gracious unto you, may he lift up his countenance upon you, and may he give you peace. 
in the name that's above every name, the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. And everybody said, amen. Everybody have a blessed week.